Washington, D.C., the power city. Between the White House and United States Capitol, a flourishing art and entertainment mecca is buzzing. This hotspot is dubbed Penn Quarter. In the heart of this cultural crossroad, the backdrop to one of the most pivotal moments in American history. Join us as we pull the curtain back and set the stage for one of the most shocking scenes in our history. Number 28 on our top 100 countdown of Museum's Hotspots. I'm Sonia Gavankar. I'm standing outside Ford's Theater, where here on April 14th, 1865, John Wilkes Booth did the unimaginable. He shot President Abraham Lincoln. It shook a country already reeling from four years of civil war. Let's set the stage. What chain of events led Lincoln to Ford's Theater on that fateful Friday? After years of brutal battling, the Confederacy surrendered days before. <laughs> During breakfast, the Lincolns decide to attend the play Our American Cousin and invite Major Rathbone and his wife to join. A lover of comedy, Lincoln often escapes to Ford's Theater. Unbeknownst to him, he is set to star in a tragedy there that evening. This is Inside Ford's Theater, and I'm here with James Swanson, the author of Manhunt, The 12-Day Chase for Lincoln's Killer. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you, Sonia. I can't believe that John Wilkes Booth just walked in the front door. He did. It was part of his plan. He arrived earlier, and he left his horse behind the theater. A highly revered actor, Booth was as famous as George Clooney is today. He was also a Confederate sympathizer who hated Lincoln. Booth scripts his plot and casts his co-stars. Lewis Powell and David Harold are set to kill Secretary of State William Seward at home. George Atzerodt is to kill Vice President Andrew Johnson at a hotel. Booth is to kill Lincoln at Ford's Theater. All are to strike at 10.15 p.m. Once he got here, shouldn't have there have been security or escorts or something? There was nothing. One man was supposed to be a bodyguard. He was having a drink next door. Lincoln's valet from the White House was sitting in a chair right here, Charles Forbes. Booth presented him with a piece of paper, probably a calling card, and Booth's name would open any door in Washington. So as soon as he gave Forbes his card, Forbes let him proceed to this door. Booth opened it and walked inside. After Booth shot the president, and stabbed Major Rathbone. He leaped to the stage, he raised himself up, walked right where we are now, and then Booth went to center stage. He really should have run out as quick as he could to escape. He couldn't help himself but take a moment, right? This was his moment. Right. He wanted the audience to know, it is I, John Wilkes Booth, that has slain the tyrant. So he faced the audience, he raised his bloody dagger in the wow. air, and he cried out the state motto of Virginia, Sic Semper Tyrannis thus always to tyrants, and then he yelled, the South is avenged. John Wilkes Booth darts out of the theater. What's on his mind? He's only thinking one thing, is his horse still out here? And is it? It is. The boy keeping it for him is on that back bench holding the reins. Booth grabs the reins, leaps into the saddle, kicks the boy aside and says, give me my horse, boy, and gallops down that alley and escapes. Oh. Today, Ford's Theater is again a working theater and a museum dedicated to President Lincoln. And this street? it would be totally unrecognizable to both Booth and Lincoln. It's now full of high-end shops and restaurants and bars, but Ford's Theater remains a reminder of that dramatic day in 1865.